war. Sanctions are an act of war. Five, six, seven, eight. No repression from the state. One, two, three, four. Sanctions are an act of war. So here we are in front of the Warwick Hotel in a free speech zone or a pen. Tell us what's going on. Well, we're here today because we know that whenever Ahmadinejad comes to New York, everything that he says and does is used to demonize not just him, but all of Iran and the Iranian people. And we're here to say that Ahmadinejad does not represent Iranians does not represent their interests or their aspirations, and nothing that he says in any of his speeches should be used to justify sanctions, which are crippling the lives of Iranian people, or any kind of military attack on Iran. Now, the image of Iran being spread in the media and Congress as this terrible force is going to be a threat, uh, wipe out Israel, threat to the world, that kind of thing. What's your view of that? Well, my view of that is that, um, you know, there's no nation that's caused more violence and destruction at this point than the United States, right? Um, so the United States, of course, has dropped nuclear weapons. The United States can threaten and threaten to invade any country in the world with virtual impunity, right? So there's absolutely no, um, it's, it's a sick joke to call Iran a threat in that context. The people who are actually threatened by the Iranian government are the Iranian people. That's the great irony. The same people that are targeted by U.S. and Israeli policies, right? So we want to stand on the side of the Iranian people against all forms of oppression, the internal repression of their democratic movement, the um, complete mismanagement of their economy, Economy and, and against the way that the sanctions and threats of war are absolutely turning the screws into a population that's already struggling day to day. In your most dramatic and largest sign, you have three people. You have Ahmadinejad, you also have President Obama and uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu. Could you talk about that? Sure. Um, I don't think that all three of them have the same amount of power. I don't think that's what we're saying. We're not saying they're all equally, um, you know, able to wreak the most havoc in the world. No, that's obviously not true. But what we are saying is that we refuse to align ourselves with um, any of their um, opinions in this matter. We, we disagree fundamentally with the idea that um, Iran is a threat. We disagree fundamentally with the idea that um, we should look to Obama or the U.S. somehow to liberate Iranians. Um, that's why it says uh, over their heads, it says we don't care about the Iranian people. We want to be very clear that if, if you stand on the side of the Iranian people, you have to oppose sanctions, you have to oppose threats of war, and you have to oppose the internal repression um, of the the, of the resistance movement inside of Iran. Last question. Uh, the other signs all have pictures of people. Could you just briefly talk about who these people are? Yeah, these are all um, political prisoners in Iran. And, you know, in Havar, we like to make connections between um, the conditions of struggle, resistance um, in different countries. So um, we like to talk about the fact that there are political prisoners in the U.S. and there are political prisoners in Iran. And that actually internal repression um, is, is, is how both of these countries um, manage to stay, you know, ma both of these governments manage to stay in power, right, is by persecuting dissidents. So the same way that here in the U.S. we would fight against the imprisonment of dissidents um, right here, we actually see the imprisonment of dissidents in Iran as part of our same struggle for social justice. And these are the people, you know, when we when we think about, well, you know, people ask, well, what do we do about Iran? And we say, well, these are the people who are trying to do something about Iran, right, from below. These are the people who are part of grassroots resistance. These are lawyers, journalists, students, um, women's rights activists. Um, bloggers, you know, these are people who are actually trying to make Iran a better place from within, not by appealing to any foreign intervention. So we stand with them. I do have one more question. Mm -hmm. Some on the left say that this is not the time now to raise these issues, that Iran is under the gun by the U.S. and Western countries, and we should this should be ignored for the time being. You obviously don't agree with that. 
I mean, I think that I, I can understand the fact that here we are in the U.S., and it's this government, it's the Obama administration in our name, right, that is, that, is, that is targeting and persecuting Iranians. So we absolutely have an obligation to demand that this government cease and desist from its collective punishment of Iranian people, right? That is our responsibility and our obligation right here where we stand. At the same time, I think that um, we have to actually have a, a, a global perspective here, and we have to actually mean it when we say we care about solidarity, and we actually care about building connections with, with social justice movements all over the world. It's not enough anymore to simply look narrowly within the borders of the U.S. It's a very U.S.-centric view, ultimately, if you can't even include in your perspective um, the social justice struggles, the, the democratic grassroots movements of other people to be free. If their struggle and experience can't figure at all in how we organize against war, against sanctions, um, then I think we're actually missing the point, which is wh what is the alternative uh, for ordinary Iranians? You know, we have an ethical um, and commitment to stand with our Iranian brothers and sisters against all of these forms of repression. We are, we are here, here to say that even in these fearful days, that even in these, these fearful days, we the youth of Iran, we the youth of Iran, will strive for the Iran that we want, we will strive for the Iran that we want, and we will love, and we will love, we will not be silent, we will not be silent.